Hello and welcome to the iSolve Time Force scheduling presentation. Today we're going to be running through the different types of scheduling that are available in the iSolve Time Force solution. iSolve Time Force is a web-based system, meaning you will not need to install anything on a local machine to run it. You can use the system simply using a standard web browser. So to start off with today, we're in the administrative section and we're going to talk a little bit about what we can get out of the scheduling piece and then we'll look at the different types of scheduling and we'll look at some of the data that the system produces. Now the iSolve Time Force solution is a scheduler that allows you to track errors. So for example, if somebody comes in late the system will let you know. If they left early or uh, left late or if they work too many hours. So it's going to be monitoring the attendance of the employee and notifying us of issues. In this area here we decide what we want to be notified of by simply checking the boxes and on the right side of the screen we can check boxes to receive email notifications for certain error events. For example, if an employee does not show up to work, we would check on scheduled absence and have the system email us when the employee did not come in. So the end result of the scheduling is going to be attendance monitoring. It's going to keep an eye on that for you. There are a lot of uh, different uh, reports and views, ways to see this information in the system. We'll look at those a little bit later in the demonstration. For the scheduling, there are two types of scheduling. The first is a dynamic schedule where the employees change schedules on such a frequent basis that we can't really set a pattern for them. So typically we'll see this in retail, hospitality, the types of industries that are going to run off of demand. So for example, one week I might work certain hours, but the following week I'm working completely different hours. For that type of environment, you'd use what we call our spreadsheet schedule. And the spreadsheet schedule runs off of a weekly basis. So initially I'd select the week that I want to look at and then I'd select the employees that I want to view. And I'll just grab these first few off of our list here. There's a list of employees alphabetically within the system or you can simply hit all to see all the employees that are available. And then it's just a matter of highlighting and moving them into the section. Now from there I'm going to hit display schedule and the system's going to pull up that week's worth of schedules for those employees. Now these are broken up by positions, departments, locations. Depending upon how your organization's structured, you'll see some, some type of breakup there. Underneath that, we'll see the employees in those positions, departments, etc. Now, for the scheduling, I can simply go click on a day and key in the times that I want the employee to work. For example, here on Sunday, I want the employee to work 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Monday, the employee is already scheduled in this case. If I wanted to change his schedule, it'd just be a matter of adjusting the times, and I can change him to work any specific times that I'd like. If I wanted to remove a schedule, I simply hit delete. When I post the schedule at the end of the process, that'll remove that uh, schedule for that employee for that day. Now, in the example of this employee, the employee works multiple shifts. So I can add shift rows into the system and add additional shifts for an employee on a day. For example, if I had an employee that worked 8 to 4.30, but they also worked between, let's say just for example here, 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening. I could have them work a double by entering it that way. I can have employees work from one day crossing into the next by simply keying in the start time and then keying in, let's say the employee worked until 2 a.m. So I'd key in the end time there. And now the employee's working a double shift and this shift is going to cross over from Tuesday into Wednesday from 7 p.m. until 2 a.m. 
Now, as I scroll down the list here, I've got an employee who doesn't have any time on their schedule. I can simply key in the times they want them, want, I want them to work. If an employee has times and I want to move those times to the following week or to another time period, there is a copy feature as well. So if I've created a schedule for specific employees, I could go in and say, I want to take the schedule I created for this week and let's go ahead and move that schedule to this week. And I can specifically tell the system, take it from here, move it to here. Now from there we do also have the ability to schedule employees to work specific departments. We could also assign them to work jobs and tasks as well. So we can code the system to do anything that we need it to. I could tell the system, for example, that on Monday this particular employee is working in this location and I need them performing this specific job. And beyond that, maybe they're working on a, a specific task as well. So we're going to capture as much detail around the scheduling as we would like. Now this is all done so far through the spreadsheet scheduler or our dynamic scheduler. So I, I've done everything here because the employees don't follow set patterns. If the employees do follow a pattern, we're going to use another type of scheduling which starts with shifts. And a shift is just a start time and an end time. So really that's all we're going to need on the shift. Now of course we'll name the shifts, we'll have that in there, we'll have an abbreviation which I'll show you in a few moments what that'll do. And there's some other options as well. We'll talk about those as we go along. But the basics, just put in the start and end, name the shift and it's all set. You're unlimited on the number of shifts you could have. You could have as many shifts as you'd like. And if you do have your shifts stored in another system, the iSolve Time Force comes with the ability to import these. So if you've got them in a spreadsheet, for example, we could import those across. Now, once we create the shifts, we then need to create schedule templates. And a schedule template basically takes the shift and ties it to either the day of the week or it could tie it to some sort of pattern or rotation. So I could go in, for example, and say the first day of a rotation they work these shifts, second day these shifts, third day this shift. On day four, maybe they're off. Day five, off. Day six, I add them to another shift, and maybe day seven is off. But I'm creating some sort of pattern. The pattern can be over any time period you'd like. For a two-week pattern, I change the pattern to 14 days, 28 days, any time period I'd like. It's just a matter of assigning the shifts that they're going to work as part of the pattern. Now, these patterns will start on a date that I specify. So, for example, I might say, starting January 1st, this employee follows this pattern. And I'll show you that process here in a moment. So, these are setup items. Create the shifts. Create the templates the employees are going to work. To actually do the scheduling, I'd go to my Schedule Employees option. And from here, I've got a couple of options. One, I can schedule by the template. So let's take that 7 to 3.30 template that we created and tell the system that starting August 1st, I want the following people to work that template. So I'm going to grab a few people. And then these people, starting on that date, will follow that template that I've set up. Now, it keeps them on that until I change it. So once I assign this, they'll stay on that. So if I had employees that work Monday through Friday 8 to 5, the scheduling is just going to be a one-time deal and I'm done. If the employees change periodically, let's say, for example, that in December the employees are changing, I could come in and say, all right, as of December 1st, the employees now work this template and move them to a different template. Now as I do this, I click Assign Employees to assign the employees out. An alternative method of doing that is by, instead of by template, we're going to do this by employee. Now to do it by employee, I use roughly the same process. I start with the date, so I'm going to say as of August 1st, my effective date. Clint is going to be working this template. Felix is going to be working this template. Ron is going to be working this, and so on down the list. 
So I can do the employees one at a time, or I could do it in a group. Either way, I can schedule them based on effective dates, and I can schedule as far in advance as I need to. Now for the next portion of the demonstration, we're going to go in and look at the schedules that we've created and see some different views, how this is going to be shown to the end user here. So I'm going to start us off with a daily view and then we'll look at weekly and monthly as well. For purposes of the demonstration, I'll pull all employees, which is the default. And then from there, I'm just going to hit view. And what the screen's now showing me at the top of the window is a 24-hour clock. And underneath that, it's showing me by department. So in this case, I've got some employees not assigned to work in a specific department. Down here, I've got my cashier, I've got Clint, I've got John Doe in Department A, and so on. And then by department, it'll show me the times that the employees are scheduled to work in a little bar graph here. The graph is interactive, so I can click on an individual. So let's go to James's record here, and it'll show me the employee, the date we're looking at. Of course, we're looking at the ninth in this example, and the shift he's assigned to. If I want to change him, I just select a different shift and assign him to that. That effectively overrides it for that date. So if I'm doing a single override, I'd do it from here. If I need to move him to that schedule permanently, I'd, I'd switch him um, via the template. So that's one method. If James is going to be off and I need someone to work for him, I can click Add Schedule, choose a different employee, and then from there choose the shift that I need them to work, and then assign that out. So I can replace employees through here. I can take employees off the schedule or switch shifts. I've got all sorts of options there. Now, another advantage to the daily view, at the bottom of the screen, uh, along with the 24-hour clock going across the top, at the bottom it's showing me coverage. So it's showing me how many people during a specific time period are scheduled. So, for example, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. I have 9 people, then it goes up to 12, later in the day up to 15, and then tapers off later in the evening, and maybe I have someone working uh, the night shift. And I can, of course, scroll down to see additional information, see all the employees, etc. So that's the daily view. The weekly view, we're going to start the weekly view. We'll run it for the week of Sunday through Saturday. But, of course, your work week could be different. A little bit different view here, but same basic concept. Now we've got the days of the week going across the top. And then underneath that, again, we've got the positions, departments, etc. broken up the individual employees who are working on those, and again, interactive. I can click, change the shift, delete, etc. I still have, of course, my ad schedule there as well. Uh, the weekly view will give me a little bit different at the bottom. Now it's showing me the number of employees and the total number of hours that are scheduled instead of the coverage we saw a moment ago for the daily. The last view on the list is going to be the monthly view. And this is going to pull up more of just a strictly calendar format. And then on any given day, I can see how many people are scheduled. If somebody's scheduled to be off, it'll show them in red. And again, it's interactive. So I can click on a record, and it'll pull up the employees who are scheduled for that day, click on an individual, make the changes, etc. This view also will show me a little bit more information. I've got holidays in there, for example, and I can see a little more clearly how many people on a specific day are going to be absent. So if I want to take Bob off the schedule, he's scheduled to be off that day, I could delete him and then add someone else to cover his shift. Now, there is a third type of scheduling available as well in the system. It's what we call assignment schedules. And assignment schedules, you might have noticed that earlier. It's an option there where we were doing the schedule template or employee scheduling. So we've got assignment. And the way the assignment works is assignment is going to be based off the number of people needed to work a specific uh, shift. So, for example, let's go down to our test here and hit display. And for this specific template, I've specified 
that I need multiple people working my seven to three housekeeping. So what this is showing me is it's showing me three separate schedules here that need to be filled. And in this case, the schedules have been filled. I've got Jane, Matt, and Cher working on these. If I haven't filled them, and I'll go ahead and remove Jane, for example, from here, the system will have a blank space for the, all the available. So let's go ahead and remove a couple of these. So now I've got uh, a couple of blank spaces there, and I can still see that I have one person um, uh, covering here. So what I would do to schedule is I'd just click the drop down. That'll pull up a list of the employees' names, and I would choose the appropriate person from the list. Then I hit assign to assign them to work that schedule. In this case, the employee schedule overlaps, so it's forcing me to choose a different employee. Um, it won't allow employees to work uh, shifts that overlap. For example, if I had someone scheduled from 7 to 3, I can't also schedule that same person to work from uh, 11 to 7. If the shifts conflict, it'll automatically catch that. So when you're scheduling, it'll show a master list of the employees that are available, and if there are problems, it'll tell you. Now, this is done during the setup of the schedule template piece, so let's take a, little bit, a look at a little bit of the setup here and see how we got to where we have three people assigned here. To do this, if we go back to our schedule templates, this is where we were earlier, and let's create a new one to start off here. I'm going to hit Create Template. You notice the system, in addition to naming the template, and earlier we had named this something along the line of uh, third shift, uh, Monday through Friday, something along those lines. Well, in addition to just the name, we could also put in a date range and a number of employees. So I'm going to make this a two-week, and I'm going to leave the employee just at the default, which I've got set to three. From there, I would choose my recurrence for the schedule. In this case, I'll base it off of the days of the weeks, but I, I could do uh, multiple days, multiple weeks, as we saw earlier. So let's go ahead and add that in. And now we can go into the system and say, all right, well, on Monday, we want them working this, Tuesday, this, Wednesday, they're off, and so on down the line. The difference here is the system knows that we're going to need three employees on third shift, Monday through Friday, between these dates. So when I go to schedule, it'll come up, if I select this, it'll come up and say, you need three people. So let's go ahead and save this one out. We're going to go back to schedule the employees. We're going to choose the assignment schedule. And now we've got our third shift Monday through Friday. That's just right on the top of our list. So let's go ahead and select the dates we want to schedule for. We'll go ahead and run it from here to here and hit display. And now the system's bringing up the shifts that we added, the days of the week, and three separate entries, and we're waiting for the employees to fill. So I go ahead and select the appropriate employees off the list and assign them to that, and now those three shifts are filled. I can filter this information as well. I can go in and tell the system, show me just what's been assigned, what hasn't been assigned, so I can go in and look if I've missed anything and make sure all the appropriate shifts have been filled. That concludes the demonstration on the iSolve TimeForce scheduling component. If you have questions or would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, please don't hesitate to contact your sales representative.